Hello, uh, dear uh, participants of the class. I welcome you all in this uh, first lecture on the joining technologies for the metals. And uh, in this one, I will try to talk about uh, the manufacturing process and uh, how the joining, joining processes are related uh, with the manufacturing. So, here uh, we will we'll start with the, the manufacturing. Manufacturing, you know that uh, it is used for, um, for, uh, for giving the desired size, shape and uh, properties to the material being processed. The purpose of uh, this uh, in manufacturing is that we try to achieve the desired size, then the different shapes are given uh, by using the variety of processes. And then uh, if required then a desired combination of the mechanical properties, uh, chemical properties is achieved through the, uh, through the treatments. These treatments may be in form of uh, the chemical composition modification like in uh, carburizing, nitriding, etc. or uh, it may be in form of the heat treatment just to change the uh, structure of the material so that uh, the change in properties can be achieved. Uh, we know that uh, for the manufacturing, we have to use a range of uh, uh, the, the shapes and the sizes. The shapes may, be, uh, may vary from very simple to very complex. So, the simple shapes can be easily manufactured say by the processes like forging or uh, the casting. Uh, but uh, when the shapes become complex, uh, the, our reliance to achieve the, the final complex shape becomes uh, uh, difficult and uh, we need uh, additional processes like machining. So, the uh, range of the manufacturing process that are required for uh, achieving the complex shapes uh, uh, is more, uh, uh, you can say it is very large in number and it requires more uh, number of the processes while the simple shapes can be achieved uh, easily. And, uh, Similarly, if you will see the kind of material that we have to process to manufacture the products of requirement, the range of uh, products, uh, range of materials which are uh, to be processed uh, uh, in manufacturing uh, can vary significantly which may vary in terms of the mechanical properties, uh, physical properties. chemical properties and the dimensional properties. These are the uh, four uh, important uh, properties uh, of the materials that uh, uh, significantly affect our selection for the manufacturing process. For example, the mechanical properties if the material is very hard and is strong then uh, the uh, selection of the manufacturing process become different than the case when the material is soft and ductile. Uh, similarly, the physical properties in terms of the thermal expansion coefficient and the melting point especially, um, they significantly affect the selection of the manufacturing process processes. Uh, chemical properties uh, involving like uh, um, uh, the kind of uh, the way they behave uh, after reaching to the elevated temperature may be in terms of the uh, producing the poisonous gases or uh, uh, the way by which uh, they decompose after going to uh, going at elevated temperature uh, say in uh, especially for the, uh, the materials like plastics and the dimensional properties are very important because we have to see that uh, what kind of uh, uh, straightness. flatness and uh, the surface roughness, surface roughness is to be achieved. So, uh, in the final product if the requirement for the surface roughness is very stringent like the very good finish is required then we have to go with one kind of uh, the manufacturing process. Uh, similarly, uh, if the very good dimensional accuracy is needed. Uh, then uh, the selection of the manufacturing process for the product uh, becomes quite different. So, gradually we will talk about the, the things that matter actually in, uh, uh, in the manufacturing uh, processes and their selection.
Now, uh, you will see uh, like uh, this is what uh, I have already talked about the common manufacturing processes uh, which are uh, used manufacturing processes which are used uh, for the metals include casting uh, like uh, forming, uh, machining, and joining. Uh, the casting is a simple process uh, where just shifting of the material takes place from one uh, uh, shape to the another. For example, this is the block of the material, it is uh, melted and after melting pouring into the mold, uh, we can get the different uh, sizes and shapes as per our requirements. So, here mainly the shifting of the material takes place from one region to another. There is no major uh, the loss of the material, just it is uh, shifted from one region to another. Uh, similarly, in the forming also, where the uh, material like the process uh, in the forming material basically subjected to the plastic deformation. So, in the plastic deformation using processes like forming uh, like rolling or forging, again the material is shifted from one block shape to like say the, the, the shape of the strips. So, this shifting basically just in uh, these two processes primarily involve shifting of the material from one region to another and that is why these uh, two processes are called zero processes where just shifting is involved, no addition and in the no deletion. While in case of the machining processes, uh, the unwanted material is removed from the stock or from the raw material to get the desired size and shape. So, uh, for that purpose, material is removed in form of the chips which are not actually used for any other purpose, it is just wastage of the metal worth. Uh, so, the machining is uh, therefore, since, uh, since uh, we use stock initially the raw material and the using a combination of the process or single processes unwanted material is taken off. So, that so say this is the material which is taken off to get the final size and, and the shape. So, by removing the unwanted material, uh, we try to achieve the desired size and shape and the, the whatever dimensional properties which are required. Since the removal of the material from the stock is involved here, that is why this kind of process is uh, called all the machining processes fall in category of the negative processes where removal of the material is involved to achieve the desired size and shape. While uh, the joining one to achieve joining uh, is a process where the uh, simpler shapes are brought together to achieve the desired size and shape uh, in the manufacturing. So, basically it involves bringing the two simpler components together to achieve the desired size and uh, to, to make the desired assembly. So, bring it involves basically bringing the things together to uh, achieve the desired size and shape. So, this basically involves the addition of the material uh, or this is an addition process where the two things or two or more uh, components are brought together to achieve the desired size and shape that is why these are called positive processes. So, here based on the uh, way by which the raw material is treated, treated uh, we can categorize entire range of the manufacturing processes in uh, three categories, zero processes where basically shifting of the material takes place and uh, in the machining processes where um, uh, unwanted material is removed to, to get the desired size and shape uh, uh, that is their negative processes and the joining processes where the simpler uh, parts or the materials are brought together to achieve the desired size and shape. So, they uh, are uh, put in the positive process categories. So, uh, so the joining is basically uh, a positive process where simple, simpler s shapes 
simple shapes components and simple simpler components are brought together to achieve the desired size and shapes. So, uh, we will uh, talk about the joining processes which are uh, commonly used here. You know most of the joining, joining as I have said it is a positive process involves the things bringing the things together. So, for this purpose basically we use uh, the three approaches involving like the mechanical joining chemical or the adhesive joining and uh, welding. So, the chemical joining basically uh, sorry mechanical joining basically involves use of nuts and bolts, rivets and a similar kind of components where two things are brought together by holding them together uh, mechanically while uh, the chemical or adhesive joining involves the use of the like say epoxies, epoxy resins and uh, the commercially known uh, uh, the joining uh, uh, substances like uh, M seal or fevicol etc. So, here the, the, they are uh, uh, these uh, adhesives or uh, the uh, adhesives are placed between the components to be joined and uh, then after uh, the curing the, uh, the suitable joint is formed. Welding involves a very wide range of the processes involving like uh, uh, the liquid based processes where uh, the components to be joined are brought uh, the fing surfaces of the component to be joined are brought to the molten state. Uh, or uh, they are just uh, deformed in the solid state. So, so the solid state joining like the friction welding or friction stir welding and uh, uh, there are certain uh, joining processes which uh, involve like uh, the base metal remains in the solid state and the filler metal is brought to the molten state uh, in the processes like um, the brazing and shouldering. So, basically they uh, fall in category of the solid liquid based liquid based processes. So, these are the three uh, processes uh, three broad categories of the processes uh, since the each of the pro approach uh, being used in each of the processes is different and that is why uh, they differ in terms of the performance significantly. Uh, for example, uh, the mechanical joints are considered to be very reliable, they can take very they have very good load carrying capacity and uh, adhesive joints they are good just to make the connections they do not have very high load carrying capacity and they are very sensitive to the environmental conditions because they degrade in case like say in the environment. Uh, at high temperature or with uh, as soon as they interact or the come across with the chemicals. Uh, welding processes, welding processes involve uh, the use of uh, like uh, the, the welding joints or you can say these uh, the joints made by the, the processes which fall in this category they have the uh, they can have the joint strength very uh, low to the very high where uh, the, the joint strength can be um, uh, even higher than the base metal strength. So, joint efficiencies ranging from 10, 15 percent to more than 100 percent can also be there where the joint can be much stronger than the base metal. But reliability of these joints um, is uh, uh, becomes mostly questionable because a uh, lot of efforts are needed to ensure that um, the joints are made uh, free from the discontinuities and free from the stress ridges so that um, they can really perform for long as uh, expected. So, uh, these are the three uh, the broad joining uh, category of the processes. Uh, we will try to focus in this subject on the uh, uh, on the welding related processes which uh, involve solid state joining, solid liquid uh, uh, based processes and uh, Mm, the liquid based processes where uh, the fing surfaces 
uh, of the metals are brought to the molten state. So, like we can see that uh, the different joining processes which have been shown in this slide, uh, the joining positive process used for assembling the different members to get the desired configuration. Like this is where fusion is being achieved in using the gas welding here, the chemicals are being applied to develop the joint between the plastic components in adhesive joining, spot welding is being done to join the strips and here fusion welding like made using the arc, uh, the joint is made and the shouldering to join the um, like wires mostly used in electronic components, nuts and bolts for joining uh, for making the mechanical joints and uh, the brazing where uh, the systems to be joined uh, in uh, metallurgically incompatible uh, metals uh, or metallurgically incompatible metals are to be joined like say for the brazing or the where the load carrying capacity requirement is not much so the braze joints are uh, used. Now, you will see the uh, since there, there are three broad categories of the mechanical joints and uh, uh, each uh, type of the joint offers the different kind of uh, properties. So, uh, the factors that uh, should be looked into for uh, selection of the joints basically it involves the type of the joint that we are looking for. Uh, it may be like say temporary or it may be permanent. So, uh, if it is per um, permanent, so if it is required that uh, uh, the frequent assembling and disassembling is needed of the members uh, to be joined, then it is better to go for the mechanical joining and if the joint is permanent, then of course, we will be looking for like say the adhesive joint or uh, uh, like the welded joints. Uh, the similarly, the kind of uh, the reliability which is needed reliability is very important, reliability is very important because uh, uh, the, the joints to be used for the critical applications where lot of uh, um, the life and the property is at stake. So, there uh, mostly either mechanical joints are used, mechanical joints are used like say riveted joints or riveted joints are mostly used for making the bridges and also in the aircraft. But if uh, the criticality of the component joint is not that high, then uh, probably uh, the other uh, joints like uh, the, 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 the welded joints uh, are also used. The load requirement is another uh, crucial or you can say the service conditions, service conditions. So, keeping in mind that service uh, is to be performed in ambient condition or in some special environment like corrosion or like low or high temperature or uh, uh, like say the involvement of some chemicals. So, depending upon the kind of the service conditions or the service environments, the suitable joint is selected. Like we would in chemical environment, we would like to avoid the adhesive joints and the low and high temperature conditions, we need to see that the, com the, the joints for the high temperature applications can resist the, the creep uh, and the elevated temperature deformation and for the low temperature conditions, it has required ductile to brittle transition temperature. So, depending upon the kind of the service conditions, we have to select suitable joining method. Uh, in corrosion, we need to see really uh, like welded joints, mostly heat affected zone and sometimes weld joint itself offers poor corrosion resistance. So, the, the filler metal for the uh, weld joint is designed in such a way that it offers the desired corrosion resistance. Otherwise, uh, we'll, uh, it is better to select the mechanical joints. if. Uh, uh, corrosion is really very crucial and if it is to be performed in ambient condition and then a normal uh, moderate, the loading moderate temperature conditions may be shouldering, brazing, adhesive uh, joints can also work good under uh, those conditions. Then uh, here we have the kind of loading, uh, the kind of the load uh, uh, or the service load conditions. So, the load may be static and may be dynamic, dynamic like where the 
fatigue or impact load conditions exist or in the static conditions. So, for the static condition any kind of the joint will be good and uh, for the dynamic conditions we really need to see that it performs, uh, it, it is able to sustain the dynamic uh, loading uh, uh, conditions. Metal systems to be joined and the metallurgical compatibility are the other two factors. Uh, metallurgical compatibility, compatibility compatibility uh, is that another important thing like if the incompatible things are to be brought together then uh, we have to use like the processes like shouldering and the brazing uh, or uh, like the mechanical joint. But if the if the, the metallurgical incompatibility is not an issue, then um, the even fusion welding processes uh, can also be used. So incompatible systems require uh, the processes where the, the, there is no direct um, the metal to metal connection in in the liquid state where they can interact with each other. So soldering, brazing, or adhesive joining kind of process can be used, or the mechanical joints can be used and the lastly the important thing is the economy. We need to see really whatever type of the joint we select in that is able to uh, that we are able to produce uh, at low cost and it can perform the function which is intended. Okay. So, uh, these are uh, the, the some of the characteristics uh, uh, which are which need to be uh, seen so that the joint performs uh, as expected at uh, the minimum cost. Uh, as far as the welding is concerned, now we will see uh, welding and the joining is concerned. The joining especially involving the use of welding. Uh, welding you know the, that uh, involves the, the two or three uh, main things one either it will be involving that fusion, fusion of the components to be joined or it will be in involving the deformation, deformation or diffusion. These are the three broad categories which are uh, uh, broad mechanisms which are involved in the development of the joint. So, uh, uh, whenever uh, like say the fusion or the localized deformation or the diffusion kind of thing is applied, you will see this uh, application, these will be using the application of heat or pressure uh, with or without use of the filler metal. So, especially in case of the welding when we use heat for the fusion heat for the uh, fusion purpose like welding processes involving the use of heat uh, for fusion. So, this brings in the unique situation where a uh, very localized heating is involved. Localized heating means if this is the component, these are the two components to be welded. So, involving the application of the heat for fusion of the faint surfaces so that they are brought to the molten state and after the solidification joint is formed. But this involves the use of very localized heating and another unique thing here is that happens that the different regions close to the weld experience the differential heating and cooling. Uh, cycles, cooling cycles means the kind of uh, the rate at which things are heated, the maximum temperature which is attained and the kind of uh, cooling rate which is experienced by the different regions close to the, uh, the weld region, uh, they are different. So, the different points close to the weld experience the different the heating and cooling cycles. So, these are the two very unique things and because of these two things only. Uh, various unique uh, uh, responses are offered by the welded joints. 
so the welding differs significantly uh, as compared to the other manufacturing processes because of these two unique characteristics involving the very localized heating and the differential uh, uh, heating and the cooling cycles experienced by the different zones. So, now you will see because of these two factors as has been explained uh, or the pointed out here, the welding versus other manufacturing process involving the localized heating and the differential heating and the cooling conditions experienced by the different zones close to the welding. So, because of uh, these two uh, is unique features related to the fusion welding. Uh, the, the, the welding offers the, the different uh, unique behaviors or the responses and which will be appearing in form of the development of the residual stresses in the welded joints, the partial melting unique weld thermal cycle experienced by the uh, unique weld thermal cycle, chemical and mechanical and metallurgical heterogeneity, reliability dimensional accuracy and finish and the unique properties like this. So, I will elaborate each and uh, every point one by one. So, the residual stresses the first of all uh, we know that uh, with the application of the heat there will be expansion and the contraction of the components and so when the heat is applied very locally. So, the nearby regions are ex ex will be expanding and on cooling they will be contracting. So, this uh, this expansion and contraction in very localized way develops the tensile residual stresses uh, along the weld line and the negative or the compressive residual stresses next to the region which was uh, subjected to the heating. So, th uh, this is because of basically the uh, very localized heating approach. In partial melting, we know that uh, the welding is unique in the sense that heat is applied uh, at the fing surfaces. So, just the partial melting takes place at the fing surface while rest of the base metal rail remains in the solid state. And because of this, depending upon the kind of uh, the weld metal, uh, whether it is autogenous or the filler is used of the different composition, we can have the epitaxial solidification or we can have the solidification through the nucleation and the growth mechanism. So, not the complete melting, but the partial melting is involved. Weld thermal cycle is what? Where it shows in that how the temperature at any point near the either in the weld pool or next to the fusion boundary, how does the temperature vary as a function of the time. If we see you take any point, point 0.1 or the point 2 which are uh, point 2 which is far away from the fusion boundary. So, the temperature variation as a function of time will show us the variation like it goes in this minus say this is for the point 1 which is very close to the fusion boundary. And if we talk of the point 2 away from the fusion boundary here rate of the heating is low, peak temperature is low and then rate of the cooling is also low. So, we will see that uh, these are the two uh, the, the, the variation in temperature as a function of time of the two points which are at different distances from the fusion boundaries or from the weld center. So, uh, since the each point offers a unique variation in temperature as a function of time that is what we say that weld thermal cycle experienced by in the joint is very unique it varies with the location of the point. Uh, then the chemical, mechanical and metallurgical heterogeneity is the another thing like the each weld joint differs uh, in respect of these three parameters like the chemical heterogeneity, the, the zone which fuses offers even of the same base metal, it offers the different chemical composition because some of the things, some of the uh, elements either they will get evaporate or they will go with the the slack after interaction with the gases in the arc environment. So, chemical composition of the weld is different and uh, the structurally they are different. It has typical cast structure like the fine dendritic structure and so the mechanical properties are different and metallurgically the weld joint is different. So, heterogeneity exists in the weld joint in terms of the chemical 
uh, uh, properties, mechanical properties and metallurgical properties. And then we will see the reliability of these joints is poor because of this heterogeneity aspect and uh, the kind of uh, uh, because of this heterogeneity aspect and the kind of stress concentration which exists in, uh, in the well joint. So, the reliability of these joints is poor. The dimensional accuracy and the surface finish uh, is the another important uh, aspect related with this dimensional accuracy. Dimensional accuracy of the welded joint in is in general poor because of uh, the, the involvement of the shrinkage and uh, um, uh, the, the expansion and cough, ex expansion and contraction associated with the heating and cooling results in the lot of variation in the dimensions and poor control over the dimensions. Similarly, the surface roughness of the welded joint is also generally poor as compared to those which are produced by. Uh, like say the, the forming or machining or uh, uh, um, casting. So, uh, uh, additionally there are two, uh, uh, two more points like whenever the uh, material systems are welded they offer the unique uh, differential behavior in terms of the DBTT. The welded joints of certain metals show the drop in their uh, toughness at low temperature that is what is called the ductile to brittle transition temperature. So, this kind of behavior is offered especially in the welded joints of the certain metal systems especially the mild steel and structural steel. Similarly, the creep behavior of the welded joint is also uh, poor as compared to their uh, respective base metals because very fine grain structure is formed in the um, heat affected zone and which lowers the creep resistance of the material and sometimes corrosion resistance is also very uh, uh, much compromised and uh, the post weld heat treatment requirement like uh, the welded joints require uh, post weld heat treatment, uh, post weld treatment especially uh, for the critical applications like welded joints frequently develop the regular stresses. So, to uh, overcome uh, uh, to neutralize uh, the regular stresses developed during the welding sometimes post weld heat treatment is performed or uh, the short blasting is carried out uh, which will improve the fatigue resistance as well as induce the compressive residual stresses. So, for the critical applications sometimes post well heat treatment or uh, the short pinning or uh, um, the special treatments are carried out so that uh, the negative effect of the welding can be eliminated. So, uh, in this uh, presentation you have seen that uh, uh, the the, uh, the joining process which is a positive process as compared to the other manufacturing processes and uh, the localized heating and uh, uh, differential uh, heating and cooling cycles experienced by the welding uh, especially in the, uh, the regions close to the fusion boundary results in the very uh, unique uh, results in the very unique uh, responses and properties to the welded joints. Uh, and that is why uh, the reliability uh, uh, of these joints of the welded joints is uh, somewhat poor. Uh, in the next uh, uh, lecture you will see that uh, uh, what are the uh, important uh, advantages, disadvantages and applications of the welded joints. So, now you have seen that there are three broad approaches for joining one is mechanical joining, uh, adhesive joining and the welding. Uh, based joining processes. So, here uh, since uh, mm, there are number of processes in each of the categories, so we have to see that which type of the joint is to be selected. For selection of the joint we need to consider certain technical points like the metal to be joined or the section of the component to be joined. So, under this category basically it is the section thickness which is to be joined and the material properties especially the melting point thermal expansion coefficient. So, high melting point material uh, required different approach for joining purpose as compared to the low melting point material. Similarly, the high expansion coefficient metals offer more problem related to the expansion and contraction related to the, especially in welding uh, in form of the residual resistance and distortion. So, they are more problematic in that way. So, we need to consider the section thickness, the melting point of the material and thermal expansion coefficient. Next is the availability of the consumables. We need to see that uh, the kind of process which is being selected uh, 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 for that process uh, the suitable consumables uh, which are required in form of say sealing gas or the filler metal or 
uh, the welding processes uh, itself, uh, the system power source systems uh, expertise for handling the processes all that is available. And then criticality of the application certainly plays a big role in selection of the uh, suitable uh, joining process. Uh, like the very critical joints where the life and the property is at the stake. So, mostly the mechanical joints are preferred over the, uh, the welded joints. And uh, similarly, in the case of welding also like different range of the welding processes exist in. So, high quality weld joints are say produced like the gas tungsten arc welding or electron beam welding. Um, those uh, and uh, for somewhat less critical applications, uh, we may use uh, the gas metal arc welding or even like say uh, um, uh, submerged arc welding process for pressure vessels. And for the most general purpose uh, applications, your uh, cylinder metal arc welding processes are used. Service conditions certainly play a big role where in selection of the joints, if uh, the environment, uh, a special environment is involved in form of the corrosion or uh, uh, involvement of the chemical or erosion etcetera, then uh, we need to see that uh, the joint is selected in such a way that it sustains the, um, the environment uh, uh, and uh, uh, it sustains the uh, service conditions in, in form of the loading. And precision required, uh, uh, the, the welded joints offer somewhat lesser precision as compared to the adhesive joints and uh, the mechanical joints. And um, uh, so, accordingly the joints are selected. The economy certainly plays a big role in uh, selection of the joints. We need to see that joint not only performs the intended function um, for the life, designed life, but also same can be produced economically also. So, advantages as for the, the welding as a joining process uh, involves uh, the welding produces a permanent joint, this is very good side. Sometimes the strength of joint is also much better than the base metal itself, which is also very good and uh, the joints can be made very economically between the components uh, bit, uh, whose assembly is to be made or the between the components to be joined. And the another important thing, it can be made anywhere. The, the welded joints are not limited to the factory environment or the shop floor environment, but these can be made uh, off sites also uh, using the suitable power source and power as, uh, supply. So, these are uh, the three uh, major, uh, three or four major advantages, permanent joint the joint can be much stronger even than the base metal, it can be produced anywhere and this can be made very economically. At the same time, there are many uh, disadvantages related with the welding, uh, like uh, you need expertise to handle the welding processes so that the sound and reliable joint can be made and for that purpose, expert, uh, ex a lot of expertise is uh, needed. So, the labor cost uh, related to the welding is uh, high. and uh, uh, it is uh, especially the welding is problematic because joint uh, produced is permanent. So, if the disassembling is required either for the maintenance purpose or for the service uh, or uh, uh, for uh, um, any other purpose, then um, the disassembling uh, cannot be done so easily in case of the welded joints. Uh, when the welding is performed, normally hazardous fumes are generated which uh, are harmful for the operator. So, special precautions are needed uh, to, uh, to take out the hazardous fumes uh, from the working environment so that the people can work safely, uh, especially the welding processes uh, applied for joining of uh, or the welding of uh, the stainless steels of a lot of harmful uh, the gases for the operator. So, those need to be taken care of. And the poor uh, reliability, since the joint itself is considered to be discontinuity because it, ha it has a lot of heterogeneity in respect of the chemical properties, metallurgical properties and the mechanical properties. So, it offers a lot of variability in terms of these three parameters. So, the joint itself is considered as a uh, um, the discontinuity and uh, the reliability also of these welded joints is uh, poor. Uh, uh, so, these are generally not used for very critical applications and if these need to be produced, then very stringent conditions are applied for that purpose like joints used for the nuclear applications and for aircraft fabrication of the aircraft components need to be, um, uh, uh, if they need to be welded, then the welding is done very stringent conditions and it is ensured that joint is really reliable and capable to take the service load as per the requirement. 
Next is uh, uh, like the, the welding process and the different applications. There are four common uh, the welding processes which have been shown and their corresponding applications. For example, the first one the resistance welding process is most commonly used in the automobile about 4 to 5000 of the spot weld uh, joints are made using the spot welding and uh, sometimes even the, the seam welding is also uh, used in case of the automobiles. Thermite welding is very common for developing the rail joints in the railways and the gas tungsten arc welding or GTAW process is used for making the high quality joints for uh, nuclear applications as well as uh, 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 for fabrication of the components for the aircraft. Uh, and uh, then uh, uh, the submerged arc welding process which is mainly used for uh, welding of the heavy sections. Uh, so, mainly used in the heavy engineering industry, pressure vessels and the shift work and uh, the gas metal arc welding process is another process which offers very good quality weld joints, but not as good as that of the GTAW process and uh, it is uh, used for the high uh, for the pressure vessels and uh, wherever reasonably good quality weld joints are needed and the sealed metal arc welding process is generally used for the general uh, pur purpose welding and for the repair purposes. So, that is what you have seen that uh, uh, in this uh, lecture we have uh, talked uh, about uh, the comparison of the joining process and the other manufacturing process, unique features associated with the joining process and uh, the advantages and limitations of the joining process and uh, uh, the, the some common welding processes and uh, their uh, respective uh, applications in the different sectors. So, thank you for your attention. I will see you uh, in the next week. Uh, next week, I mean, see the next lecture, I will talk about uh, 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 the, what are uh, uh, the approaches which are used for the uh, joining processes and uh, what are the common joining processes and how uh, we can classify the different joining processes whether they fall in the solid state or the solid liquid state or the liquid state uh, the joining processes. Thank you for your attention.